So you're probably watching this video because you're unclear of what your role is as a new budding entrepreneur, or you're very unclear of what the difference is as an employee versus an entrepreneur. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 differences between an employee versus an entrepreneur happening here in three, two, one, let's go. What's cracking everybody? My name is Smart Guy Matt Sapala here and happy Vlogmas 2020 where we're uploading an episode every day from December 1st to December 24th here of 2020 to finish off this year the pandemic so therefore we can help you launch off a very hopefully prosperous 2021 for you. And so the purpose of Vlogmas is I get into it is we want to help you understand the rules of the money game. We want to give you a little bit of a different insight uh, as untraditional from our previous content. Number two, we want to make sure that you have a clear income type strategy for how you make money in 2021, probably the reason why you want to watch this video. And number three, also personal leadership development, because listen, you can't outgrow your identity. You know, uh, money is a magnifier and we want to make sure that you are ready for your blessings where you're ready to take on new challenges in 2021. So in previous videos, we share with you some of my favorite books and how I started thinking differently about money. We talked about Rich Dad, Poor Dad. We talked about secrets of the millionaire mind in previous episodes. And to have a quick reminder here, we share with you the cash flow quadrant, which is the second book of Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, first book was Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which today is still a New York Times bestseller, phenomenal 25 years later. But his second book, for me, was also very impactful because it showed me the different ways to make money. You can make money in America as an employee. You can make money as a self-employed person. You, in other words, you work for somebody else with a W-2. Or self-employed, you work for yourself, you're a 1099 independent contractor, gig economy uh, type person. Or you can slide into a business owner where you have a system and a process that works together for you. And a small business, according to Robert Kiyosaki, is a small business where you have 500 plus employees, 500 plus independent contractors, 500 plus different brand ambassadors, for example. But you are primarily running a system, running a process to make your money. And then you eventually slide down into what they call the investor category, the active investor category, where you actively invest in businesses, active investors in things to help you make and print basically your own money. So in this episode, I want to share with you the people that are considering making a career change. For the people already in a the business, they're not very clear exactly what the role are because you're in transition from what you were groomed and conditioned to do, which is work for somebody else. And now you're conditioned, now you want to recondition yourself as a be my own boss, uh, I'm going to work for myself type person. And so I want to share with you the 10 differences, clear differences, so therefore you can make a separation of where you're at financially in 2020 to where you're going to go in 2021. So here we go. So number one, an employee thinks this way, most of them, and if you want to be a successful entrepreneur, you got to be looking at these type of things going forward. So number one, employees think linear. In other words, punch in, punch out, 9 to 5, 40 hour work week potentially 60 hour work week, but basically I do a job, I get paid. I punch in, I get paid. I do a job, I get paid. That's called linear income. It's based on time and trading time for dollars. Okay. It's called linear income. That's why when people shift into entrepreneurship or have uh, conversations with their friends about entrepreneurship, they're very confused. They're like, well, why are you working that business for a month and you're not getting paid yet? Or why are you working a business for six months and you're not getting paid yet? Why are you working a business for a year yet and you're not really financially ahead yet? Guess who that was? That was me. I was the guy that was working a business, wasn't getting paid yet. I was working three different jobs. I was a G. Philip Hood technician. I was an Olive Garden server as a YMC lifeguard as I was building my passive income. I was building my business as an entrepreneur. But next thing you know, boom, it started coming. One, two, three years of suck and win. Next thing you know, boom, $100,000 income. Boom, $250,000 income. Boom, $350,000 income. That's what happened to me. My friends were laughing at me. They're like, ha, 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 you're working that business. He's still driving a janky Cadillac, uh, 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 Cadillac DeVille. And they're driving around Mercedes Benz and Range Rovers. But years later, guess what happened? This started taking off passive income, active income, running my business as an entrepreneur. So here where is a big difference between employees, how they think about making money versus how entrepreneurs think about making money. Number two. Employees have a fixed income. No matter how hard you work, whether a salary or you have an hourly wage, that's why a lot of people today right now, so thank you politicians, thank you politicians for giving us a $15 an hour minimum wage would be phased in here in the next uh, several years, few years, but that's a fixed income. In other words, no how, how hard you work in that hour, you get 15 bucks an hour. No matter how hard you work that, uh, that year, that, that month, that week, you're gonna get a salary. 
there's uh, for some for some people there's just no bonuses it's a fixed income or if it is a bonus it's a de minimis amount with an entrepreneur they have the potential of unlimited income we have exponential growing income so this is what entrepreneurs are after they want to not have a cap they don't have a limit on what type of money to make they say if I work hard if I put all my time and effort into this thing can I have this massive empire can I have this massive income can I have no limit on how much money I make yes that's called free enterprise that's called capitalism that's called entrepreneurship you know with the, the four tenets of entrepreneurship free to buy free to sell right and free to try or number four free to fail that's what goes into this thing over here guess what you fail guess what you just lose your job you get another job over here you fail what's the risk you lose your money, your credit, your time, potentially relationships. But over here, you lose a job, you get furloughed, you get laid off, get another job, right? The biggest amount of risk is here. By the way, I'll get it uh, here in a second, but we're going to talk about tax benefits in a second. Number three, works for someone. An employee works for somebody. They got a boss. They report to somebody. All good, no problem. Uh, a entrepreneur works for themselves. Just by the way, just, just so you know, who's the worst boss to work for? someone or themselves well if i'm an entrepreneur themselves is myself guess who initially was the worst boss to ever have the worst boss to ever have was myself <laughs> i was the worst to work for myself you know why because i didn't know i didn't know how to be a boss to myself i get up whenever i want to get up you know make calls whenever i want to make calls eat lunch when i would eat lunch be multiple lunches three hour four hour lunch breaks Oh, it sucked wind today. I'll just do it tomorrow. There was zero discipline working for myself as an early aspiring entrepreneur. However, your boss won't let you get away with that or he'd lose his job, right? So again, there's a different, uh, the big differences here until one learns how to become a good boss, who they hold themselves accountable. Some small businesses are smart enough to have a advisory board. Larger small businesses will have a, a, an official board. Uh, large businesses have a, a, a board where they're paying people $100,000, $300,000 a year to be part of the board. That's where they hold themselves accountable, not to necessarily to themselves, but to a board. That's the aspiration, and that's the elevation of where an entrepreneur will go. You have to eventually, if you want to be an aspiring and successful entrepreneur, you got to hold yourself accountable to somebody. Fourth one, no need to overachieve. All good, man. You know what I used to say in the military? Yo, this is good enough for government work. <laughs> another day, another dollar. Good morning. What's so good about it? Oh my gosh, Mondays, go oh, get out of here. Man, I can't wait till Friday, All right? No need to overachieve. What do entrepreneurs say? Can't wait to get to Monday. Oh my gosh, it's Friday already? Oh my gosh, there's so many things to do. See, there's a difference here between mindset and how they perceive things. Listen, if you read the book, The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, right? If you read the book, The Millionaire Mind, T. Harv Eker says in his book, millionaires, which are a lot of entrepreneurs, millionaires have different thoughts, because they have different thoughts, they have different feelings. Because they have different feelings, they have different actions. And those different actions create different results. So if somebody doesn't want to overachieve because their thoughts, feelings, and actions relate to say, you know what, it's okay, good enough for government, well, guess what they're gonna have? The same old, same old. Another day, another dollar. But an entrepreneur who's wired to say, let me reshift my thinking, let me adjust my feelings, let me take dif different action, massive action, so therefore I can create massive results, boom! They want to overachieve. They want to be successful. They got a chip on their shoulder. They want to prove everybody wrong. They want to bless other people. They want to help a community. They have a big problem they want to solve. They got a lot of money to make. They have investors to repay. Whatever the case may be, they have a big reason to overachieve for their own success. Uh, number five, vacation determined by employer. Hey, when I was in the military, 30 days paid leave. We didn't even call it vacation. They, they, talk, they talked about, about leave. You can leave the base officially, quote unquote, another word for saying vacation in the military. But for example, if you work for a boss, one week vacation, two week vacation, three week vacation, based on the amount of time you worked at your employer, however they set the time frame. But either way, guess who's not in control of your vacation? You is determined by the employer. They might tell you, you got to work on a holiday. They might tell you, you got to work on a Saturday. That's determined by your employer. Guess who determines your vacation as an entrepreneur? You do. Somebody asked me, Matt, when's, when's your Friday? What do you, what, when do you actually celebrate Friday? You know what we actually used to do before we hired, started hiring people to do things for us, to, to, to implement uh, different strategies and project management to create jobs? You know, what our, you know what our Fridays were? Our Fridays were Monday afternoon or Wednesday afternoon. I used to take my wife and say, babe, you know what? We haven't been on a date in a long time. And guess when I didn't want to take my wife on a date? Friday nights, Saturday nights. You know why? Everybody's there. Theaters are crowded. Restaurants are crowded. Well, this is pre-pandemic, right? 
everything was crowded. People were getting into fights, traffic, people were getting drunk, all these different things. Listen, you know, <laughs> I probably dated myself, but after a while, those things aren't fun anymore. They may have been fun in my early 20s. They may have been fun in my late teens, but they're not fun when you got kids. You're not fun, th those things, any longer. When you're grown, you got to make some decisions about money and responsibilities. You have to get up in the morning to take care of those responsibilities. But we determined our vacation. We determined our days off. We determined, hey, babe, let's go take off on Wednesday afternoon. And guess what we did? We went to the theaters on Wednesday afternoon. Guess how many people went to the theaters on Wednesday afternoon? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> so I go in there and say, hey, babe, I want to let you know, <laughs> I uh, decided to uh, rent out the entire theater for us. <laughs> And uh, pick a seat, any seat, go and sit down. We got some popcorn coming, hit the buzz. Bzzz, okay, we ordered, you know, uh, wine and beer and pizza and whatever. We just had a date watching the movie. Nobody in the movie theater. You know what? You know who determined that? We did. And so it's not like we we're playing hooky because we we're working for somebody. We we're working for ourselves. So we determined a vacation. We decided to take a vacation for three days, seven days, 14 days. We decided to say, you know, my, 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 my wife, she says, baby, I want to go to Korea. I said, great. It was we take a trip to Korea, we want to stop by and see my family in the Philippines, in Manila, in Davao. So we're, gonna, we're planning an Asian tour. I want to go to the Philippines. We're going to go to Korea. I might want to go to Vietnam or Thailand. Uh, my, 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 ter my tailor happens to be in Burma. So we might make a trip over there. But we're going to have an Asian tour coming here pretty soon. But who determines how long and where we stay at? We do. Okay, number six, no tax benefits. What am I talking about? Let's go back to the cash flow quadrant. Well, as an employee, think about this. You get gross pay, right? You get 50 bucks an hour, 35 bucks an hour, 100 bucks an hour, whatever you get gross pay is. Some of you say, man, that's really gross. <laughs> okay, I get it. Guess what the first thing is taken out of your paycheck is? What is it? Taxes, federal taxes, state income taxes, Social Security, OASDI, FICA, what? You probably have a different four-letter F word. I remember my son, he had his first job at 15 years old pushing carts at Dominic's. He said, Dad, somebody ripped me off. I said, what, 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 what do you mean they ripped you off? They didn't give you a paycheck? He said, no, Dad, up here it says gross pay, and down at the bottom it says net pay. Dad, they're two different numbers. One's higher, one's lower. That's what I really got paid. I like the bigger number, Dad, but they really paid me the lower number. Somebody ripped me off. <laughs> I said, son, welcome to working for somebody where there's no tax benefits. Welcome to working for somebody where the first thing that's taken out of your paycheck is taxes. However, as an entrepreneur, even if you even slide down to the self-employed, you're working for yourself, you're being your own boss, and you eventually scale, you scale to becoming a business owner. You start implementing systems and processes, you start hiring, recruiting, and training people to work in your different departments. You create standard operating procedures to help up people do the menial tasks that you used to, right? And so you're creating jobs now. You're scaling, you're growing your business, you're growing your passive income. What starts to happen? Well, Uncle Sam says, hey, you're a generator. Hey, you're a generator. What do you mean? Uh, you generate income for yourself, so you're not dependent on church charity jobs uh, from somebody else or, or the government, and you're a generator, you're creating jobs, you're circulating money in our community, you're creating people to buy things that creates sales tax, that creates gas tax, that creates income tax. For you, you're allowing people to buy houses, home, excuse me, homes, houses, homes, whatever it is. In these neighborhoods, there's real estate tax, there's car stickers, there's car sales tax when people buy cars. Listen, you are a generator. You're creating a lot of revenue to be generated in a community. And since you're doing that, since you took the risk as an entrepreneur, which comes to the root word, one who takes risk. And if you're an entrepreneur, that one who takes risk, we're going to give you certain tax benefits for incentivizing you to take those risks. Why? Because you're taking care of yourself. And since you're taking care of yourself, we're going to tax you less. One of, the, one of the rules that the Rich Dad, Poor Dad book taught me is that rich people don't pay taxes. What? Wealthy people who are usually entrepreneurs don't pay taxes, but there's specific codes that allow those who are growing a trade or business to allow other tax deductions to offset their income, which they otherwise don't have to pay taxes on those. I'll give you an example. When I first started my business, I was about three, four years into it. I ran into a high school buddy of mine. Remember, keep this in mind. I went to Morton High School in the Berwyn, Cicero, Stickney area here in the Chicagoland area. And so the big accomplishment at our high school was not to go to college. Our big accomplishment was to just graduate. So anyway, make a long story short, we graduate. I go to the Marines. And lo and behold, I didn't find out until I got back from the Marines, that he actually went to law school. 
went to law school, became a lawyer, big hotshot lawyer downtown. Awesome. So proud of him. Bumped into him, uh, bumped into him uh, downtown where I was going to the train at the metro station. Anyway, we kicked, we kicked off a conversation. He goes, so, so all this stuff that you're doing, man, all this stuff you're doing as an entrepreneur, the insurance business, in sales, you make $100,000, but you go through all that risk, you go through all that headache. He goes, I work for somebody. I'm a junior associate at a law firm, right? So I make $100,000 here. Why go through all the risk when I get a guaranteed check and you don't? So we're actually having this debate over lunch. I said, I said Chris, you and I don't have the same $100,000 income. I said, what do you mean? He goes, you make your $100,000, you make your $100,000, and the first thing that gets taken out of your paycheck is taxes. Let me figure this out, bro. You make $8,333 a month, 30% of your income has gone to taxes, which is about a net $5,000, assuming state income tax too as well, right? He says, yeah, so you probably take home about $2,500 every two weeks in in your income, direct deposit to you, right? He goes, how would you figure that out? It's easy, because now the first thing that gets taken out of your paycheck is tax. I just do the math in my head. You're, you're, at that time, you're a single dude, no deductions. You bring about $5,000 a month home net, gross slash net, like my son experienced pushing carts to Dominic's. You as a lawyer in there, Chris, you're making $100,000. You're, you're taking about $2,500 every two weeks. And guess what, brother? At $2,500 a week, I see your BMW right there. I see your fancy department downtown. That first paycheck is gone in condo, in fancy apartment downtown, and your BMW payment, right? And your $300 uh, car insurance and, and a, a, a gas bill uh, for gas, right? Yeah, your lifestyle is eaten up by your first paycheck, right? Well, my first paycheck and a half. <laughs> Guys, he was making $100,000 a year living on paycheck to paycheck. The biggest thing that was getting taken out of his paycheck is what? Income tax. Uncle Sam and cousin Illinois stuffing his hand in his pocket. I said, Chris, the difference between me and you making $100,000 is I choose when I can take my vacation. I go when I want to go. Um, I can overachieve. You, you know, you, you're helped with your promotion uh, to become a junior associate, a senior associate, based on the partner's recommendation for you to move up the chain in the law firm. And whether or not you're going to be a partner in that law firm might be taking 10, 15, 20, 25, I don't know. And then when you become a partner in a law firm, guess what you got to come up with? Money, because you got to buy into the partnership. So the difference between me and you is I'm already ahead of the game where you decide to become a partner because you can then become an employee to a self-employed person, finally. I'm already 15, 20 years ahead of the game. Furthermore, guess what happens to me? I have income tax benefits. See, the difference between me and you is our cars, my car, assuming it's used for business use, my car payments, the miles I drive, the maintenance on my car, the depreciation on my car, guess what? If it's used for business purposes, I get a tax deduction for that. You got no tax benefits for your BMW, your $600 a month BMW payment. Guess what, your cell phone, you pay 150, 200 bucks a month for it. Guess what, you can't write that off because a law firm is paying for that because you're an employee over there. They're paying the bill, they get, they get the tax deduction. You don't. Guess what, I work for myself as an entrepreneur, Chris. So guess what, man? I uh, write off my smartphone. I write off my brand new uh, uh, iPhone. I write off a portion of my, of my cell phone bill that's used for business purposes. Hey, Chris, guess what, this lunch we're having right now, since I'm an entrepreneur, guess what, I'm buying. I'm buying, I'll be a little bit charitable with you and reconnecting here after high school. Chris, I buy this meal for us, since we're talking shop, we're talking business, guess what? 50% of this meal potentially could be written off my income taxes. So there's a little fancy meal we got going on here, $30, $40 bill for taxes or, or for lunch. Guess what? I can use this receipt or use uh, and, and validate with the, my, my credit card statement that this was for business use because I use this specific card for my business expenses, Chris. So in other words, you and I have the same income but we get taxed differently on our income. The first thing you get taxed on is on a, a rate of $100,000. I get taxed on with all my deductions. With all my deductions, let's say I have $60,000. Bro, I, I get taxed on $60,000. You take home $60,000. See the difference? Even though I expend those different things, listen, bro, you're behind the money game when it comes to me and you. And guess what? You'd probably be stuck at $100,000 income. Guess what I can do? I can turn my own vacation. I can overachieve. I can have potential limited income. You're limited for a minute. The partner is going to say, when you get promoted to senior associate, the partner is going to say, when you are worthy enough to be a part in the law firm, right? Do you have control over that? Nope. There's a difference between, between me and you making 100 grand a year. I'm an insurance agent, and you're a law firm, and I just schooled you on money. When did they teach you money at the law school there, Chris? Silence of the lambs. <laughs> you, guys, you guys get it? By the way, as I'm sharing all this, I know I, there's a whole lot of complexity that just went on. I want to simplify your life. I want you to purchase this book, Lower Your Taxes Big Time, written by Sandy Bakken, one of my favorite books when it comes to understanding the rules of the money game. 
And here's one of the first chapters. I love this chapter. Why you would be brain dead not to start a home-based business. Why? Because you're growing a trade or business. And for those of you who feel froggy, listen, how many, how many guys have a car? Well, here's chapter number five. How to turn your car into a tax-deductible gold mine. Boom! So we can help eliminate, reduce, and mitigate the biggest expense that most people have as an employee, which is no tax benefits. And as long as you grow a business on the side, a side hustle, a side business, as long as you're establishing a trade or business, the, the IRS doesn't dictate how much time you have to spend to grow your business. As long as you start establishing a trade or business on this side of the quadrant, guess what? You can start now enjoying certain tax benefits. Woo! Number seven, waits to be told what to do. See, an employee says, okay, I show up to the job, what now? What do I got to do? There's no incentive for that employee to take advantage unless that company incorporates an incentive system for people to start thinking like an entrepreneur as an employee called an intrapreneur, but most companies don't do that. By the way, something to consider in 2021 for those of you employers out there, you have to have some form of incentive for some people to have some skin in the game so you have some joint success to share the responsibility, to share the pressure of growing the brand, growing the company. But most companies don't. Clock in, clock out. They're waiting to be told what to do. What do I do now? Okay, I'm done. What's next? In the meantime, I'm kicking back, reading a newspaper, Going through, going through my phone, non-productive. Meanwhile, you're on the clock. See, waits to be told what to do. However, an entrepreneur is a self-starter. Bro, I wanna grow my enterprise. Back to the point of overachieving for more success. Hey, I'm not satisfied. I wanna be my prior best. I wanna see if I can beat my last quarter. I wanna see if I can beat the last three quarters. I wanna see if I can beat the quarter of the previous year. I wanna make sure year over year, I'm beating last year, this year. That's called being a self-starter. Number eight can be fired or replaced. You think you're doing a good job. You're thinking you're doing a job. You're thinking doing a job and bam, pandemic. Bam, over the powers that be, they put you on a spreadsheet because you're a cost to them on the balance sheet. You're a cost to them on the financial statement of the company. And you got put in the class of a line item and said, listen, these people here are expendable for the company, sadly, and you are either fired or replaced by technology. You're fired or replaced by artificial intelligence. You're fired or replaced by a robot. You have no control over that. You say, listen, I just put five years of my, my life into this thing. I put 10 years of my life into this thing. I know. Listen, I'm glad you did. You have something to show for it, which is personal pride. And in the meantime, you paid your bills and you financed your lifestyle. You're able to save some money and help your kids to school or whatever. But guess what? You just got fired, sadly. You have no control over that. Your employment there is determined by your employer, not you. Well, here's the thing too as an entrepreneur. Once you realize what you're worth, once you realize what you could be passionate about and monetize that and make it a profitable passion, once you realize that your self-worth is more than just 10, 15, 20 bucks an hour, that you want an incentive plan to start earning some more money, guess what? You cannot be fired nor replaced. My guys here, by the way, my guys here that shouldn't help me shoot this video, guess what? I have an incentive plan for them to not be in entrepreneurs, but to be entrepreneurs. We're constantly talking about all the time. Hey guys, what do you, to, what do you guys want to do this month? How are we going to grow the Seven Figure Squad brand? How are we doing this? Because this is my second business I'm, I'm starting um, in combination with my insurance business. So this is a, a YouTube channel, uh, a social media presence. We're building on the sides. It's becoming another new startup for us. But I'm asking my guys, what do you want to accomplish? What do you want to do? What do you want? Not what I want. What do you want if we do this? If we do this, you get what? That's a conversation you need to have. So therefore, people become irreplaceable. Otherwise, they're expendable. And something you got to be thinking about too as well as an employee. So as an employee, how you cannot be, let's say you don't want to work for yourself. You don't want to be an entrepreneur, no problem. But how can you put yourself in a position that you're invaluable? That you're an entrepreneur that's tied to the growth of the company and the CEOs and the boss know that. They're not willing to make you a partner yet, but they know they can't accomplish what they want to accomplish with the business without you. How do you become not fired and irreplaceable? By taking some of the same tenants that entrepreneurs use for your business and they call it intrapreneurship. For example, Stephen Ballmer, Bob Iger, you know, many people who work for somebody, they may not have started a business. They probably didn't put any financial capital. They probably didn't have any reputation risk. All they need to do is get promoted from within, improve the departments, show value, and get promoted up the chain eventually. That's called entrepreneurship. They take the same type of habits, self-starting mentality that entrepreneurs use for a corporation. Number nine, building somebody's dream. Uh, at a job, guess what? They paid you to give up your dreams. <laughs> Matter of fact, at your job, when's the last time they ask, hey, hey, Felipe, hey, 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 Jose, hey, Paco, 
right? Hey, Ramon. Hey, 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 Maurice. Hey, Matt. Hey, Ivan. What's your dream? What do you got? What do you want to do? What are your goals for 2021? Have they, have they ever asked you that? Or do you just sit down with the boss with an annual review or quarterly review and say, <clears throat> Based on your performance, da, 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 you could have done this better, da, da, da. If you don't do this better, you might be fired. What type of performance review, what type of annual review do you have with your boss? Why? Because you're building somebody else's dream. And that's okay if that's what you want to settle for. So I remember watching this movie uh, with George Clooney. It's called Up in the Air. And sadly, he had to come in and lay people off. And he sits down with one of the guys and says, listen, I got to let you go. And the guy's like, listen, man, consider this a wake-up call. He says, I, uh, I noticed here that uh, you've got some different talents. And the guy's like, hold on, interrupt. You're firing me. You're laying me off. The guy's like, dude, I'm making $90,000 a year, man. I'm making $90,000 a year. And what, what's unemployment? 250 bucks a month or 250 bucks a week? I'm going for $90,000 a year. I haven't gone unemployment until I find another job. What, what are you doing this for? What are you doing this to me? And he goes, listen, George Clooney said, listen, according to this, you went to college for this. According to this, you were this type of person. According to this, when you were younger, you had this dream. You had this goal. Why'd you quit? How much did this company pay you to give up on your dreams? Woo! Deep. So when you're looking at this, how much is somebody paying you to give up on your dream? Remember when you were a kid? Remember you had some goals? You're just, hey, mommy, papi, I want to do this. I'm going to be an astronaut. I'm going to be a firefighter, a soldier. I want to be a, a basketball player. I'm going to be a football player. I want to be this. I'm going to be a doctor, a lawyer. I want to be a president of the United States. Why'd you give up on your dream? And what did somebody pay you to give up on your dream. It's still there. I know it. You just haven't cranked up the dream machine lately. Well, guess what entrepreneurs do on a daily basis? We get to live out our dream. For the rest of our lives, we get to go out every day and express the creation of our dream. And we manifest that through our actions, our thoughts, our feelings, and we get it done. Or not. But here's the bottom line, though. We get to build our own dream. We can take a look back and say, man, I got something to show for, man. Instead of you renting an income from an employer and saying, dude, you just let me off, you let me go. Oh my gosh, I got a 30 year mortgage. I just got a new house. I got a new car. I just put my kid to college and now you just laid me off. Dude, I, instead of having something to show for, I got a lot to owe for. What do you want to do? Your choice, employee or entrepreneur for your long-term financial goals. Last but not least, last but not least, most employees, not all, most employees are stuck becoming followers. Like they don't, like back, back to this, they're waiting to be told what to do. What's worse is they're waiting what to do and somebody to tell them what to do with their life. They're following. I think you see that in our country today. More people today are following because they're afraid. They're afraid to fail. Remember back to free enterprise and capitalism and entrepreneurship? Free to buy, free to sell, free to try, and free to what? Fail. And a lot of people don't want to fail. But did you realize failure is just success turned inside out? That you got to go through failure to understand the pressure and the resistance necessary to you, for you to enjoy your success, for you to actually enjoy what you've built. To look back and say, man, the juice of that sacrifice <clears throat> is so freaking worth it because you chose to become a leader. And all leadership is, is influence. Through your business, you can influence the lives of the people that work for you. Through your business, you can influence the lives of people that work with you as vendors and contractors. As a leader, you can influence the people that's in your community, your family, your friends, the political leaders, the church leaders, the, the, the religious organizations, the nonprofit organizations, your schools, your Boy Scouts, your Girl Scouts, your sports teams. You can be an influence because you're choosing to, sp because you're choosing to sponsor sports. And let me give a quick example here real quick. There was an entrepreneur that blessed me in my life because he started thinking big. Let's look at this picture right here. I'm 16 years old in this picture. I'm 16 years old in this picture. This is my cousins. I'm 16 years old in this picture. I'm, I got a basketball jersey on because I'm playing for the Filipino Basketball Association as a teenage kid. I'm 16 years old. But some entrepreneur decided to bless our basketball team to be sponsored with our jerseys. And guess what? The guy that owned it was a small business owner. Had a company called ALW. <laughs> was called AL Wins, which is actually today called Prime America. I'm not part of that company, but imagine somebody sponsored because they're an entrepreneur. Follower or leader, long term, the choice is yours. So before I let you go, some of you may have been intrigued by number six here in terms of tax benefits. Why? Because for some of you, 
Taxes is your biggest expense when you take it from your gross pay to your net pay. And one of the ways to reduce that is through entrepreneurship, either on a part-time or full-time basis because you're establishing a trade or business. So my encouragement to you is watch this video right here, how millionaires use taxes as a liability or an asset. And I educate folks here on the difference between getting a tax refund or paying taxes. Which one is better? And also, we have a comment contest. Don't forget this comment contest. For the top three people that are first to comment on either Facebook or YouTube, we're gonna give you guys a free T-shirt here from the Seven Figure Squad merchandise store. Are you guys ready for this comment contest? I wanna give you a shirt. Here we go. Top three on either YouTube or Facebook. Here we go. Comment contest, here we go. On the comments below, fill in the blank. As a millionaire entrepreneur, I can deduct blank. Okay, you guys remember when I was talking about that? As a millionaire entrepreneur, I can deduct blank, right, from your taxes. So fill it in. I wanna see who's the first to comment. Uh, I wonder what you guys are thinking about that and how you say, hey, as an, as an employee, these are just his expenses. But as an entrepreneur, these are potentially tax deductible expenses if I'm growing a trade or business as a entrepreneur. So with that being said, guys, outside of the comment contest, I'd love to know your thoughts. I'd love to know what you're thinking. I'd love to know your feedback. Drop it in the comment section below. I love the interaction we got going out right now. Again, Vlogmas 2020. We have an episode a day from the December 1st until December 24th. We have a video for you to hopefully inspire you to the next best version of you because the best is yet to come for you. If you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube and you want to think like a millionaire, you want to strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire, make sure you follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. So that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Again, please drop your comments below. Love your feedback and love our interaction. Here from the Seven Figure Squad Studio in Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.